This is John Cola with GrowingYourGreens.com. I have another exciting episode for you. Today we're going to do a really good episode. And you know, this one is the easiest way to make compost ever. Now, I must admit, I'm a neophyte composter. While I am a fairly good gardener and can grow a lot of stuff and do it fairly well, I've never taken the time to really dive into getting a compost pile going. I've had pallet piles and different, uh, you know, compost bins, and it never seems to work for me. I pile the stuff on, it just doesn't happen. So what I've learned is that I've learned the easiest way to do it is with a special composter that we're going to show in a second. But more importantly than the composter you're using are the ingredients that are going to make up your compost. I was just actually over at my brother's house the other night and I was really saddened to see that he's just throwing out all his uh, vegetable scraps and fruit scraps in the garbage. So it goes away <laughs> to the landfill. And in my opinion, you know, composting is not just for tree huggers and gardeners. It should be for everybody to conserve the world's resources. If you don't personally garden, then you should compost yourself and give your compost to a gardener because I'm sure you probably know at least one of them. <laughs> I know I'll take your compost if it's good high quality stuff. The first thing to a successful compost pile is the right ingredients. You need a percentage of carbon to nitrogen and that percentage needs to be correct or your compost pile is not gonna work as efficiently as it should. Now you could look it up and you know, get a headache looking at all the ratios and figuring out, oh, to get the right ratio, I need to use exactly this much and this much. But you know what? I like to keep it easy because if it's too hard, guess what? You guys aren't gonna do it. So the very simple plan I have here is that I use the waste for my food scraps in my kitchen and I have a nice bucket in the kitchen. This is a nice uh, three gallon bucket here. It's actually full to the brim. And uh, this is what I would call the nitrogen uh, waste product. So we got things like actually, uh, well, <laughs> Paper towels, this is actually a carbon. <laughs> we got a dryer lint actually here. So dad, don't forget about your dryer lint. We got a lot of vegetable pulp. So I do juicing uh, regularly and we got a lot of carrot pulp. And also I just got done juicing some of my brother's peaches off his tree. I made a uh, strawberry peach juice. That stuff was insane. Anyways, so now I got all this pulp that I generated and all my food waste from uh, leaves and whatnot. And this is gonna go in the compost pile. Now, if I just pile this in the compost pile, it's not really gonna work because it's just too much uh, nitrogenous waste product. Now, if you don't have any carbon waste to add to it, the one thing you could do with this is actually just get a worm bin. That's not gonna be covered in this episode, but a worm bin or a worm box is very simple to have. You could have it in your apartment in New York City, underneath your sink, keep it in you know, the garage, outside if it's not getting too hot or too cold and the worms will literally eat your garbage or eat your food to make actually worm castings, which in my opinion, in some ways are actually more beneficial than just making standard compost. Uh, nonetheless, besides just the standard nitrogen waste products, you need a carbon source and there needs to be a balance. Now, I'm not really gonna get into the details of the balance, but what I will tell you is that, you know, for every bucket of, <laughs> I like picking it up, nitrogen, you wanna get about at least an equal sized bucket or right, maybe even then some of carbon. So my carbon sources today are some leaves. You can see I have some dried leaves here in this bucket. And in addition, for people that may not have leaves, depending on where you live and depending on what time of year it is, I always encourage you to save the leaves uh, for the summertime uh, and for the wintertime in the fall. Put it in a nice big you know, uh, container in your garden, like a big garbage can, and save those leaves because many people are getting rid of them because leaves can be actually a scarce commodity at some point. But if you don't have leaves, not to worry, you can use other carbon sources. So what I have here, some shredded uh, newspaper, and actually some uh, shredded paper bags, the brown paper bags. And uh, you know, so I like to shred up things. Also, there's some computer paper in here, some white computer paper. Now, it's not the best to be shredding up computer paper and whatnot because the computer paper has the toner, which is a carbon, <laughs> also probably with some plasticizers as well. But the message here is, you know, I, I like to use a uh, newspaper that's printed on with soy ink. That's the best to use as a carbon source. If you do use something else, you know, do the best you can. If you don't have any other carbon source, then, you know, pr use the printer paper, <laughs> use that. And actually a good thing to do with your junk mail, as long as it's not glossy pages, shred it up and use it in your compost pile. Uh, that being said, instead of the paper, I would prefer to use leaves or even wood chips or sawdust from 100% you know, um, wood, not from particle board and plywoods. They have glues that aren't good to add to your compost pile. So when you think 
nitrogen, think greens. <laughs> so we have some greens in here. And when you think uh, carbons, think brown. So browns think leaves, think trees, thinks, think uh, trunks of trees, thinks leaves, thinks sawdust, and the products that come from them, like, you know, the uh, paper towels here. Uh, in addition, the one thing that you definitely should add to your compost pile if you're just starting out is grab some compost right out of your garden. You know, that's some nice compost. This is a good finished compost. And this is active compost. And when we add this into our uh, compost pile, it's going to get the ball rolling and get some of those beneficial microbes. They're going to help break down the pile faster. I have an established compost bin, so I don't need to add any this time. But I just want to mention it to you guys because it is very important. The other thing I like to add to my compost bin every single time that I add some compost is this stuff right here. This is called the alzomite or rock dust. And what this stuff does, it adds trace minerals into the compost pile. Literally, what I found is that the rock dust literally supercharges your compost pile. The microbes go nuts for the rock dust, the trace minerals in there, and your whole process happens faster. The side benefit is when your compost is done, it is pre-inoculated with the trace minerals in there so it's gonna basically feed your plants as well so we're just gonna go ahead and dump some of that in there now so we don't have to dump it in the compost pile next let me show you guys the compost bin that I'm using because this is the one that I found to be foolproof and works very easily every single time as you can see I have three compost bins here in the yard and uh, the first one is the first one I got this is just a static pile and you know this has a rock on top because the hinges broke <laughs> And so you could look in there and see, basically, you know, I've added uh, leaves and the nitrogenous waste from the food clippings and it's really just not breaking down. You know, I'm not one to get in there and turn my compost and keep it watered and all this stuff. You know, I got other and more important things to do. So, you know, I'm slowly gonna ration out the stuff in here into one of the tumbling composters. And that's the kind that I recommend for you guys to get because it just works the best, very simple, very easily. I've been very successful with it, unlike with a static box like this. So uh, let's go next door and take a look at these compost tumblers. Here are my two compost tumblers. This happens to be a lifetime compost tumbler. And uh, this is the one, actually, I have a video of building this one and comparing it to this one, which is basically a 55-gallon barrel composter. It's kind of cool because it's made out of a barrel, and you could get these barrels for cheap. Um, Personally, what I found is after using both these guys, I really prefer the Lifetime composter for a few reasons. Number one, it's a lot more heavy duty and sturdy. Has nice uh, metal framing here, nice plastic and thick plastic. It also has uh, basically latches to unclip it, which is very simple, clips up. And then you can just uh, open this guy up and it's ready to fill. Oh man, and I can feel the heat coming off that. That's really cool. So uh, this is ready to fill and basically I just fill the stuff in here, dump the stuff in spin it around and you know it just does its thing that's it's really simple doesn't take any time out of your day you don't got to get here and shovel it and turn it around all you got to do is spin it and let me tell you when this gets full it gets kind of heavy but it's good exercise on this guy the reason why i don't like this guy so much is because this has the uh, lid is kind of a pain in the ass to take off you got to spin this thing off And you gotta mess with it and you know when you're dealing with compost you just want to be able to do it and not screw around I got it off and now I'm gonna just go ahead and put it back on this is just kind of a pain in the butt I think a better design if you do want to use a barrel and reuse it put it the you know instead of this ways put it the long ways and uh, you cut, a, cut a hole in it for the door and put hinges it'd be much better than this the main steps for making compost the easy way is number one get a compost tumbler I happen to like this lifetime one until I find one that's a bit better but I like the ones that are go open long ways. It has a nice door on the hinges and also the steel construction. Very durable, actually. So once you get that, then you just got to start adding your materials. And the ratios is the most important thing. So we're going to start adding the materials here. Here's all that food waste. Dump that in there. Tap that out. <laughs> Next, got your carbons. This is all the paper shreds. Check it out. Wee! Next, we got those leaves you saw that I raked up. Drop that in there. Finally, for added measure, I was uh, trimming my tree collar, so I got some tree collar leaves. So yeah, don't forget about all your yard waste to go in your compost pile too. 
All right, once that's in there, all you gotta do on this bad boy is uh, lock it up, clip it down, very simple, very easy, and spin. Huh. Huh. <laughs> huh. Gotta make the noise or it doesn't work good. Huh. 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 This will give you a workout, and this is why I don't go to the gym. It's better to get exercise in nature. <laughs> All right, so once I spun it around a bit, I'd like to just open it up and take a look, make sure it's per fairly well mixed. Check it out, nice and well mixed. And man, I could feel the heat off this. Maybe a nice cold winter's night, you could snuggle up <laughs> in your compost bin and be nice and warm. I mean, this is seriously warm. Now you could get a compost thermometer if you wanted to, and I might get one for here just for fun, but I know this is totally an active compost pile. It's been working really good. Now the third tip I want to recommend for you guys is, you know, once you get one compost pile turning bin like this dialed in and it's nearly full, get a second one. Very important tip. Once this is full and working, you're going to just leave this alone and then get your second one and start filling it and get that going. And once that's full, by that time, <laughs> this one's going to be done. But don't forget to continue to spin this. That way you can have two bins and keep rotating back and forth between them to make a continuous, endless supply of compost to feed both you <laughs> and your garden. And it's feeding you indirectly because the compost you make at home is the number one fertilizer, in my opinion, to add nutrients back in your soil. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode learning more about my tumbling composter and how it's the easiest composter to use in the world if you get your ratios right. Once again, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. I want to encourage everybody to go out and compost today.